Hello, my name is Blake Angelos, Keyboard Product Specialist for Yamaha Corporation of America, and welcome to the second part of my CP4 tutorial, Performance Creation. In part one, I covered the basic editing controls of the CP4, defined the concept of the performance, introduced the quick reset function, covered basic voice selection within the main part of a performance, introduced the part select buttons and fader controls for the main, layer, and split parts, introduced the concept of common and part edit modes, and covered performance direct select. In this video, I'll take you deeper into performance editing by taking you through the process of editing four different types of performances. As I said in part one, I will really be focusing on the CP4, but virtually everything here applies to the CP40 stage piano as well, since the operation of the two instruments is virtually identical. Before we get started, you may need to back up any custom performances you have created. After this is done, I ask that you perform a factory reset of the keyboard if you are following along with your CP4 during the upcoming editing session that follows in this video so your instrument will be in the exact same state as mine. If you need to do this, just follow these instructions. Once this is done, perform a factory reset. I'll let the screen stay for a moment if you need to do a screen capture or jot down these steps. The best way to get familiar with performance editing is to actually edit some performances and store them. I will create four different performances and take you through the process of the creation of each one. Performance 1 is my edited version of the CFX Piano. Performance 2 is a layer of the Piano 2, the CF3S Concert Grand with a string voice. Performance 3 is a custom edit of one of the electric piano sounds where I change some of the virtual voice parameters that make these EP sounds sound so authentic. And Performance 4 is a more complex synthesizer edit where I split the keyboard, put a synth pad sound in the left hand, a synth lead sound in the right hand, and a few edits to both of these voices like filter and effects. So let's start out with Performance number 1, which I like to call My CFX. Press the Performance Play Select button and call up Performance 001, Bank A01, CFX Grand. Press the Edit button and you should see the top screen Performance Common Edit. Now, the edit that I want to make is going to be to the main part and not the entire performance, so I want to use my arrow button to page down to 02, Part Edit, and press Enter. Now, we are in the specific Part Edit mode and you should notice that the screen says edit part colon main. The top of the menu is the play mode of the main part, which is where you can edit some specific attributes to how the main part voice responds to your playing. I want to edit this, so I'm gonna press enter. Now, once I am in this play mode menu, I wanna use my down arrow button and move through all the things I can select until I get to the very bottom of the list. At the very bottom parameter is key off ball or key off volume. This parameter brings up the overall amount of mechanical key off sound, just like the real thing. And I think it adds to the overall expressiveness and playability of the piano sound. I like some of this effect up in my piano sound, so I want to increase this to about plus 10 to add some of that key off sound. Now I want to make some changes to first the main part insert effect B, and then the reverb system effect. The main voice has two part effects that are specific to the main part. 
These parts are usually specific to the type of instrument being used. On this acoustic piano sound, part effect A is a damper pedal resonance effect that simulates the sympathetic vibrations of a piano soundboard when the damper pedal is pressed. I like this effect, so I'm keeping that, but I do want to make some changes to part effect B. Now, I could press the exit button and back up and out of my editing hierarchy and find part effect B under part edit, but the engineers at Yamaha did a smart thing and gave me a cool jump to edit feature. If you look next to some of the buttons, like the effect buttons, you will see a small dot which signifies jump to edit. Pressing and holding any of these buttons for a few seconds jumps directly to that area. So first off, press and hold the Part Effect B button to jump to the Part Effect B settings. The effect assigned to this part effect is 3 band EQ number 3, which is in the Pre or Preamp effect category. There are a total of six modeled simulations of expensive boutique microphone preamplifiers like the ones used in high-end recording studios when recording real acoustic pianos, and each one has a different character. In the CP4, there are three three-band microphone preamps and three two-band microphone preamps that are available for you to use. The default setting is three-band EQ3, and I want to change this to three-band EQ1. Why? Well, for my piano, I like this preamp better, but of course, that's a subjective opinion. Now, if you want to edit this effect and boost or cut any of the three bands, change the frequency, or any other editable parameter in this effect, you can press the down arrow to see all those settings. Let's change the reverb system effect now, which is a common edit parameter that affects the entire performance as opposed to a part edit which only affects the selected part. I want to change the preset reverb of Wood Room to N Hall or New Hall Reverb. I really like the sound of this New Hall Reverb, and for that reason alone, I like to use this on my piano sound. Again, you can press the down arrow to change the settings for the New Hall Reverb effect. These are all the edits I want to make for this performance, so now I want to name and save what I've done here. Press the exit button once. Remember, we jump to a parameter in the common edit mode, so exiting once gets us to the main common edit list. The naming of a performance is something that all the parts share in common, hence it is a common edit. Using the down arrow, navigate down to number four, name, and then press enter. Using the left and right arrow buttons and the data wheel, you can select and enter characters. I named this performance my CFX because, well, this is my custom CFX sound. Now let's move on to the next performance, CF Layer. With this performance, I simply wanted to create a layered piano string sound with a big resonant CF3S, the piano in the acoustic piano 2 category, and one of the nice string section sounds in the layer part. First, I want to press the performance play select button and, using the data wheel or plus one yes button, select the default performance 75RDMW, which is an electric piano voice. In the voice category section, on the right, I'll press the A Piano 2 button and select 01 CFST or CF3S stereo piano sound. That's now in the main part. Now, I'll press the layer button over on the left to turn on the layer part. 
It's important to note that this is already selected as indicated by the blinking arrow in the screen. So any part edit you make affects the layer part alone and not the main piano part. The currently selected voice is 25 soft pad 2, but I want to change that to a string voice. So I will press the strings button in the voice category section and I actually like the first voice, 01 Velo Strings. As we saw before, underneath the illuminated layer button is a fader. It should be assigned a volume under the slider function area directly to the left of the fader. You can move this to adjust the relative volume levels between the main and layer voices. Again, as I showed you in part one of this tutorial, note that by pressing the slider function button, the function cycles between volume, chorus, and reverb, allowing you to reassign those faders to control chorus effect or reverb effect depth as well. Once I have it where I like it, I will need to name this performance, so I'll press the edit button, move to 01 common, press enter, down arrow to 04 name, and rename this performance 02A02 from 75RDMW to CF layer. Press store, select performance 02, because that's where we want to save this performance. Press enter, press plus one yes to confirm, and save to this location. Behold, CF layer. <laughs> The performance I want to create for performance 003 I will call My Mark II, which is my tip of the hat to the original version of the electric piano I once had, the Rhodes Mark II stage piano. The one I had, it was pretty nice. It was just really heavy, and the hammers would occasionally break, so I had another one just for parts. It had a great sound and a lot of thunk from the key mechanism. That sound was part of its character. The spectral component modeling in the CP4 is remarkably good at attaining that authenticity with just a few tweaks. The first thing I want to do is start with selecting performance number three. The default performance in this location is called 003A03 CFA bass, which is a split acoustic bass in the left hand and the CF3 acoustic piano in the right. First, I'll touch the illuminated split button on the left to disengage the split. It will now only show the main voice, and that voice is now automatically selected. In the voice category section, I will press the E Piano 1 button and, moving the data wheel or pressing the plus 1 yes button a few times, I will select voice 0375RD1. At this point, I want to edit the main part voice, so I'll press the edit button and if needed, I'll use the up arrow or the down arrow buttons to select 02 part and press enter. Then I'll select 01 play mode since the parameter I want to change affects how the instrument plays and thereby how it sounds too. And I'll press enter at this point. Now, using the down arrow button, I want to go to the last selection on the list until I see the part main in the left side of the screen and the two parameters key off ball or key off volume which is essentially the same parameter we edited for the first performance but now this is the electric piano key mechanism sound and strike pause or strike position first I want to add some of the key mechanism so I will first change that parameter to plus 10 now 
To get the sound I want, I need to change the strike position or where the virtual pickup is in relationship to the virtual tying of this electric piano. By moving it to the rear, I get a more funky, thunky type of sound. If I move it to the top, I get a purer, more bell-like sound. I want to emulate my original instrument, and the rear one position totally fits the bill. Now, I have the piano I want. Realize that I could make some additional edits to things like the virtual preamp in the insert A effect. I can even use different types of preamps from the history of the Rhodes electric piano and create cool customized hybrid versions. You can explore that in further detail if you want later. But right now, I'm going to save this sound as it is. So I'll press exit twice to get back to edit 02 part. And then I'm going to move up one to edit 01 common, press enter, navigate to 04 name, and name this performance My Mark II. Press store, select performance 03, press enter, then plus one yes to confirm, and now you've stored this new performance My Mark II. <laughs> This last performance is a bit of a departure from what you would expect from a stage piano as it is a synth pad sound in the left and a synth lead sound in the right, but it underscores the fact that there are a lot of other sounds in the CP4 other than just acoustic and electric pianos. I tried to restrict all of my audio demonstrations to the CP4 only, but as you just heard, for this final one I added a percussion loop I got from Steinberg Cubase 7.5 to add a bit of a groove to underpin the split performance. This performance is definitely more complex as it takes more edits to create, but it highlights some additional editable parameters that you will probably use and it will be applicable to other edits you might need to make on other performances. First, I will select performance number four. The default performance is a layer of the A Piano 3, the dark and intimate S6 acoustic piano, and a synth pad, and it's called S6 plus pad one. First, I'll touch the illuminated layer button to disengage the layer. Then, in the voice category section, I'll press the synth button, and moving the data wheel, or the plus one yes button, I will select voice 34 in the night. Now, I will press the split button, noting again that the voice is automatically selected since the arrow icon in the screen is blinking and pointing at the split voice. Then I'll press the synth button and select voice 03 analog strings with my data wheel. I want to set the split point now and to do this I simply press and hold the split button and touch a key on the keyboard to set the split point. I selected the G above middle C which is directly below the LCD screen. Now let's edit these voices to get them to play how I want. I know that I want to change the octave that the voices are playing in, and I will want to be able to use pitch pen and mod wheel on the synth lead sound, but I don't want those controls to affect the synth pad sound. Additionally, I will want to be able to press the sustain pedal to hold the synth pad sound in the left hand, but not the synth lead sound in the right hand, as I want to play the lead over a sustained pad. These will require a few edits. First, let's change the octave of the split voice. The split voice should be selected. If it isn't, press and hold the part select button and touch the split button to ensure it is selected. And then press edit. Move to 02 part and select the first selection in the menu 01 play mode. 
then press enter. Using the up arrow or the down arrow, I want to navigate to the screen you see here, which is three pages from the top and five from the bottom of the whole play mode menu. We're looking for the note shift parameter. Set this parameter to plus 12. Doing this shifts my synth pad sound up an octave. Next, we are going to change the PB or pitch bend and MW or modulation wheel status from on to off since I do not want these controllers to affect my pad voice in the left hand. Press the exit button once so you see the part edit play mode and then move down to number six, receive switch and press enter. Two pages down is the PB and MW parameter. Change these from on to off. Again, it's important to recognize that we are indeed editing the split voice by seeing the part split listed in the upper left. I should say that when I edit the main voice in a moment, I won't need to do any of this. The pitch bend and modulation wheel defaults to on. At this point, I need to turn the sustain off for the split voice. Now, by default, this setting is turned off as a common use of a split keyboard is to play a bass in the left hand and a piano in the right. You would want the sustain off in this scenario because it makes sense to have the bass not sustain over a piano that does sustain. In this case, I'm going to change that. So I need to move one more page down until I see the screen below. Turn the SUS or sustain parameter from off to on so you can sustain the synth pad sound and play the lead over the top. Now let's do some edits to the main voice. Since I'm already in the area where I can switch the sustain pedal on or off, all I need to do now is select the main part. So press and hold the part select button and touch the main voice button to select the main voice. Once again, note that the part main appears in the upper left hand corner. Turn the sus parameter from on to off. Now the main part synth lead voice will not sustain, but the pitch bend and modulation wheel will be active because they default to on. But the split voice will sustain because we changed that, but we turned off the pitch bend and modulation wheel so they will not be active. From here, I want to add some cool synth filtering to both parts by pressing the exit button once, and then I'm going to navigate to edit part 02 filter EG, and here I'll set the filter settings for both the main and split parts, as in the screen you see here. These are just my settings. You can certainly experiment with the settings to get the filtering you like the most. There are just a few more edits to get this performance where I want it. I want the synth lead sound monophonic, and I also want a bit of fingered portamento on the sound so I can get a cool glissando slide effect between the notes. I also want a delay effect added to the sound as well. So first off, with the main voice still selected, I will press the exit button once and navigate back to 01 play mode. Three pages from the top is the part mode parameter. I will change that parameter from poly to mono. Now I want to navigate down from the page above to the page below to select the portamento settings. As you can see, I set the portamento to fingered portamento, and I set the time to 23. That works the best for my playing, but again, that's a subjective opinion. You can set it to wherever you want it. And finally, I want to add a delay effect to my lead voice by pressing and holding the part effect B button and thereby engaging the jump to edit feature. I then just select the cross delay effect. Again, you can easily edit this part effect by using the down arrow to see the cross delay parameters. As before, I will now select edit common 04 name and name this performance L dash pad slash R dash LD or left pad right lead and then store that performance in location 04. I hope this video series helped you understand 
a little bit more about the editing and customization capabilities of the CP4. You now should know about the basic structure of a performance, how to utilize performance direct select effectively, how to edit different parts of a performance, and then how to save those performances for instant recall. I should mention that there are two documents you should really look at as well in the CP resources section here at Yamaha Synth. One is a great introduction to the CP4 written by the legendary Bad Mister. And the other one is one that I put together about setting the velocity curve in the CP4 to get the most expressiveness you can from your instrument. Keep checking back here at YamahaSynth.com for more tips, tricks, events, and everything else related to Yamaha synthesizers, stage pianos, apps, and all things for music production. Once again, this is Blake Angelos, and thanks for checking out part two of this tutorial video. Thank you.